so what I'm doing is I am using my ironing board to hold my quilt for me and I am using my jug of quilt basting spray. Is it working for me today? <laughs> it needs to be soaked so I can use that. But I do want to get this quilt done if possible today. So what I'm doing is I have my quilt draped over my ironing board and I have my box of safety pins here and I'm just literally pinning my quilt. So I'm pin basting this particular quilt. It's the three yard time machine quilt. I want to get this done so that I can go on to the next project because I have some other stuff going on that in the long run is actually more important than this one. <laughs> Make sure I went all the way through there and didn't get two layers. But the ironing board makes this pretty simple for me. And I'm just sliding back and forth here. I'm starting on one side of the quilt, making sure that I've got all my layers flat and just pinning it in. I am not crawling around on the floor. That's not something that I'm, I'm capable of doing. But I do want to pin base this pretty thoroughly. And I can lift up this edge and just kind of lay it on my lap so I can reach up underneath. My ironing board has a fabric cover on it that I put on it. And I don't want to pin to my fabric cover, obviously because I want to be able to move the quilt to free motion quilt this. And I'm putting my pins in about a hand's width apart. I saw a really clever idea from Tracy at the Sewing Channel. Sorry you're seeing my back. I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to get it to where you can see what I'm doing. But I saw a really clever idea from her. And I think I'm going to make myself a pin cushion to go with this box. But she opens up her pins and then puts them into a pin cushion so that they're easy access for her. I don't usually pin quilts. I usually spray base. But I thought, well, let's see. So I'm opening up 10 or 15 pins. I'll pin the next area. The reason I'm not opening the entire box is if I spill it, I don't want to be picking up opened pens. I'm not anticipating spilling it, but you know, stuff happens. All right. And so what I've done there is I've just pulled it so that it's taut. The word is taut, not taunt. And I am putting my little pins in. I know that I've got plenty of room around my quilt. I didn't open that one I just grabbed, but I'll open it pretty quickly. Go through. And you could actually, if you wanted to, put all of your pins in and then come back and close them. I like them closed, but you know, whatever works for you. This is about how to do this when you aren't capable of getting down on the floor and crawling around and you don't have lots of strength in your hand and you don't have, you know, kids that you can recruit to do this stuff for you. That would actually probably be a great idea. I don't happen to have any around here today to be able to recruit, so. That's not an option for me. And then as I get higher on the quilt, I'm going to move this out of my way for a second. I can pull more of it over. Lay what I've already done in my quilt or let it hang, whichever. Make sure that everything is still flat. And go to the next section of my quilt. 
Bring my pens back over here. And I'm going to start pinning right here in the center. If I had a big enough table to lay it all out on, well, one, I would probably be spray basting it. But a big table would also make it easier to go ahead and do this, the basting part. I'm just showing how I do it. Constantly checking to make sure that everything is still flat and straight. I don't want to end up with puckers in the back. You can see I'm still having issues with being able to pin <clears throat> with my hands. My sewing machine bit me yesterday while I was making a bowl during a live. If something can go wrong, it's always during a live, right? thread that can go away. I'm going to keep pinning. And I'm just basically working back and forth across the top of my quilt so that I can get everything put together. The, these safety pins happen to be just big safety pins. They're not the curved ones. I know where my curved ones are, but These were handy, within reach, and you can see I'm pinning it together. I've got a big area right there, so I'm going to go back and pin that. Oh, no, I don't. There's a pin in there. Okay, good. See how easy it is to move things around with the ironing board involved here? <laughs> if you have a long arm quilting machine or if you have a frame like a cutie frame you don't have to do as much of this and I do have a cutie frame but I'm not putting this on the cutie frame today I'm just gonna free motion quilt it on my baby lap jazz I have free motion quilted on the jazz before without issue so I'm gonna do it again today um, I do have a domestic machine but I haven't free motion quilted on that in quite some time, so I'm out of practice. The beauty of this is that I can just turn it around. And even though I have a fairly small space in my sewing room, I can wiggle the ironing board around. I'm double checking down here wiggle the ironing board around and now that I've got most of that side done as I pin this side it will work out any wrinkles or puckers that might have been in there this is a hack I've been using for years even before I started having issues with arthritis but it works really well and when you're in a small space or you can't get up and down on the floor it's a whole lot easier it also works great for if you've got a carpeted floor and don't have like a laminate or tile floor that you could lay this out on this gives you an option it works i've used it for up to a twin size quilt if we get over a twin then we're going to go to the big folding tables and I have spray basted quilts this way before too. It's 
matter of fact, that's what I was going to do until I found out my basting spray had uh, a clog in it. So I've got to clean that clog up today. So this is just pin basting using your ironing board. And since I've already pinned up towards, up and over here, I'm going to start here and just keep working my way down. I will bring you back when I have it all pen basted. Okay, so I'm almost done with pinning everything together. And I am shifting my quilt over a little bit. That's for a couple of reasons. One is I know my backing is really big compared to my quilt and my batting. So what I'm doing is I am moving it over, making sure I haven't folded that backing up underneath the quilt because I don't need a double layer of batting. Making sure that everything is still flat and that my backing is still bigger than my batting and my quilt. And then I'm going to bring my pins over here again. I'm going to open a few more up. I should have done that off camera, but I wanted to show you guys that last shift using the ironing board. And I can't figure out a way to film this for you today so that it lets you guys see up close and personal what I'm doing. But here I'm lifting up the entire quilt sandwich away from my ironing board so that I can pin that border down. And then I'm going to move over a little bit. There's another pin right there, another safety pin. So I'm going to kind of go in between and down to get the next one in. And you can raise and lower the height on these old style ironing boards um, so that it's at a height that's good for you. This is actually a little high for my shoulders because when I moved it, the ironing board around, it lifted it up at the legs. So I'm going to leave it where it's at for a few minutes. When I get ready to go over to the sewing machine, I'm going to lower it back down. And you see what I did there? I kind of pulled it so it's taut. Put a pin in. Pin it together. I can straighten it back out. Make sure there's not a pucker in there. I'm going to go down here. And I'm kind of zigzagging, I guess is the best word for it, down the length of my quilt. Making sure that I've got plenty of room. The backing on this is an old sheet and so I want to make sure that the way I cut the sheet, it's an old fitted sheet that I cut the elastic off of and I want to make sure that the edge of that fitted sheet is beyond the edge of my quilt. And I'm having a good arthritis day, so pinning this isn't super difficult. But I do want to make sure that that stays where I want it to stay. Alright, so now that I've got the most of the body pinned, I'm going to pin down this border. And I'm not pulling it super tight, but I am pulling it so that everything is flat and I don't feel any puckers. Slide it down. And this is a practical and frugal way to baste a quilt because it only requires a one-time investment in safety pins. It doesn't require replacing safety pins very often. These are stainless steel pins. It would probably take quite a long time to rust. Um, I've never had a safety pin rust on me. But I am in Florida. It is very humid. 
So if you live in a similarly humid client climate, you might have that issue. And again, like I said, I'm sorry you're looking at the back of my head, but I am trying to let you see what I'm doing as far as the safety pins go. And I think I need one more pin there. Um, one thing to remember about doing this also is more, more pins are better than less. You're going to have to be cautious whenever you are free motion quilting that you don't run over a pin. But you don't want your quilt to shift at all. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just kind of looking looking for lumps and bumps and anything that might be an issue. I didn't iron my backing. I don't really care. I'm going to use a white thread for the backing. Or for the bobbin fabric here. I found another spot that needed another pen. I'd just rather put more pins in it than less so they don't end up with puckers or anything like that. But here's my pinned quilt. Everything's pinned together. I'm looking at the back to make sure that I didn't pin any puckers in. I didn't iron it, but there's no puckers. And I'm also looking to make sure that along these edges, I didn't pin any of the extra edges in there. And I didn't, so I didn't fold the fabric over. So that is how to pin base a quilt on an ironing board. And this happens to be my three yard time machine quilt. Now I'm gonna drape this back over the ironing board. And the next video that I show you will be free motion quilting this on the Baby Lock Jazz 2.